Hey guys, today I am talking about college and I am super excited because I am going back to school in about three weeks so I decided to start my back to school series early. I know everyone's going back to school at different times. Some people are going back now, the middle of August, and some people are going in September but I wanted to start making my college videos and I wanted to wear my college sweatshirt that I love so much and I wanted to inform you guys on classes and scheduling and just give you guys some back to school advice that I definitely did not get when I was a freshman in college and if you guys are wondering I am a sophomore in college so I do have I guess some knowledge of what to expect in college not too much though because you know I have three more years to go but I wanted to talk about classes because I feel like classes was one of the biggest things that I made a mistake in at least um, in the beginning um, when I went to my college orientation as a freshman, you know, I asked my teacher, I said, how many units should I take? She goes, oh, you should take 12 units. Most people take about 12 units each semester. So I go, okay, I'm going to take 12 units. But then after I take, you know, my classes or after I realize, you know, like what I'm actually doing, because, you know, as a freshman, you don't know what you're doing. So you're going to listen to somebody that that you think knows what they're doing. So I took the 12 units, right? But then I calculated, you know, on a piece of paper one night, how many units it's going to take to graduate and how many semesters it's going to be. And I came up with 12 units each semester. That doesn't let you graduate in four years. That lets you graduate in six years. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. 12 units? No. So I decided to take 15 my next semester, and I'm taking 15 here on out. Um, because I need to graduate, you know, on time or at least early. On time or early, but not after four years. So anyway, but I just found it, I found that that was weird because it's, it's, you're making people graduate in six years instead of four, which is more money and it's unnecessary and blah, 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 I could go on forever. Anyway, so that's why I want to talk to you guys about how you guys can take 15 units and not let it be, um... What's the word? Overwhelming. Yeah, that's the word. Okay, so when I took my first 12 units, my first semester, it was overwhelming because I, I don't know. Like, I took some morning classes. I had a 9 o'clock class. I had an 8 o'clock class. And then I took some night classes. I took, um, you know, some 6 o'clock classes and some 4 o'clock classes. And what was overwhelming about that was that my evening classes were three hours long. I decided to do the three hours um, in one day instead of three hours um, throughout the week. So I thought that would be beneficial, which it is, but it's not beneficial for me at night because as soon as it hit around like six o'clock, I was ready to go to sleep. Like I did not want to be in class at all. And some of my morning classes, like I had a nine o'clock or I had an 8 o'clock class in the morning, right? And that went from like 8 to 9.30. And then later on that day, that's when I had my like 4 to 7 o'clock class. And that was overwhelming because I worked in between. So I went from 8 to 9.30. And then I went to work from like 10 or 11 to like 3. And then I started my class at 4 to like 7. And then I was just knocked out. Like I was, I was tired because I personally, I need a nap. I need a nap throughout the day. I don't care when it is. I need some sort of nap. And that whole day that I told you just now didn't include a nap at all, unless you want to include a one-hour nap somewhere in between. But that really didn't count. So I was tired. And I wasn't always busy during the week. That's just one day. I think that was Tuesday. And then um, I think on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I had... Um, I had a morning class at like 10 to 11 and then I didn't have anything else but long story short that wasn't the way to go I shouldn't take three hour classes at night because I'm tired I shouldn't take early 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 in the morning classes and work and then take an evening class because that's just too much for one day so I decided that I am going to do all of my classes in the morning and end them all by 12 o'clock during the week. So I did that my second semester as a freshman year and it worked perfectly. It worked great for work. I worked at night. I worked um, in the morning from like, not worked, I went to school in the morning from 8 to 12 
Um, and, you know, I think I had like a 10 to 11 break. That's when I went and got breakfast. And then I went to sleep or did homework or hung out with friends or whatever I wanted to do. And then I went to work from about um, 4 p.m. to uh, 1 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I had a night job. So that's what I did. And I think it worked out fine. I, you know, it worked for me. But anyway, so this semester I signed up for my classes and I decided to do all morning classes again. I don't know, you know, where I'm going to work or what I want to do or whatever. So uh, that didn't really bother me when signing up for my classes. I have one online class. I have this calendar. If you guys are wondering what I am holding, it is my pink calendar that I bought freshman year. Um... Did I really use this? No, but I thought it would be cute for video purposes. And um, basically, Sunday through Saturday. And what I am going to do is schedule myself on this calendar, of course. And it's just cute. Anyway, so on Monday, I have two classes. Yes, on Monday, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I have two classes, and they are both women gender studies classes, and um, that's the subject, I'm not sure what the class is actually called, and it is from 9, I think 9 o'clock is the new 8 o'clock, you guys, so if you guys are kind of like, oh, I don't want to wake up at 8, wake up at 9, because 9 is the new 8, okay, anyway, um, but like I was saying, I have 9 o'clock class, and I did them for uh, one hour. So it's one hour for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, which makes a total of three, which gets you your three units. And I did that because the three-hour class in one day wasn't for me, um, at least for classes that I'm really not interested in. So I'm doing that, and that is from 9 to 10. And then, or 9, 10 to 10, something like that. And then um, I have a break in between, and then from 10, 10... Wait, no. No, from 10, 10 to 11 is my break. And then from 11, 10 to 12 is my, um, what's the word? Oh, is my other women gender study class. I forgot the title of that, but I know that's the subject. And there, I'm done by 12. So that's pretty, that's, that's it for Monday. That's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But on Tuesday, on Tuesday is a little different. On Tuesday, um... I decided to take two classes that I know that I'm going to kind of have a hard time doing because they're three hours long. Um, and because they're three hours long, like it has to be three hours. Like there's no there's no one hour thing. These, this type of class, it has to be three hours. And so I am taking two classes that are for my major. And one is from like 9.10 to 11.55. And then the other one is from 7 o'clock to 9.45. And I know that is super long. Like, Asia, what are you doing? But at least I get to take a nap somewhere in between those classes. But I chose um, that class, the night, the night one at least, because I knew who the teacher was. And I've taken the teacher before um, my freshman year. And I know he's a really cool guy. And I know that I'm going to do good in his class, you know. And so that's why I took it. It was either that or take some other class with some teacher that I didn't know. So I am going to push through the night with my hot chocolate. And I am going to <sighs> pass the class. Anyway, so that's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Tuesday. If you guys are wondering about Thursday, I decided to take Thursday off. And Thursday is going to be a, I guess, a work, sleep in, do homework, chill with friends type of day, maybe. You know, or make YouTube videos. Um, I just didn't want to go to school on Thursday because it's just... Mm, Thursday. I have this book to show you guys right here. This was my fall 2013 class schedule freshman version and it has a map of the school on the back. I recommend you guys get a map of the school because um, you might get lost. I I have, you know, I kind of have a sense of where things are and where everyone's going. I'm not the type of person that's like, oh my gosh, where is this class? Where is this map? I don't know how to read a map. Oh my gosh. And then you're late for class. I wasn't like that. I was kind of like, oh, where is this class? This is where it's at? Okay, I'm going to go over there. Some people aren't really that map um, savvy, I guess I should say. Oh, I have a lisp. Anyway, um... But anyway, so I recommend 
probably, um, okay, it depends on if you live on campus and if you don't live on campus. Um, if you move in, you know, if you move in, you know, a couple days before school starts and you're on campus, definitely walk around and go see where your classes are at. You don't necessarily have to exactly go inside and see which class is which, but I do recommend going to the building at least go to the building and be like hey this is the humanities building this is the business building this is the science building you know you know where it is okay so oh the cafeteria duh you need to know where the cafeteria is so you can eat you know don't be that person that can't eat um because you don't know where the building is but anyway so yeah i recommend going and mapping that out as well and what else oh yeah teachers 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 um, I guess this is beneficial if you haven't picked your classes yet or if you're thinking about changing. If you want to change your teachers and you don't know who's good and who's not, first you should ask around. Uh, I don't really think you should base the entire opinion of the teacher, um, I'm saying um too much. I don't think you should base your opinion on the teacher by other people's comments because some students... <sighs> You'll ask, a, you'll ask a student, you know, like, hey, how is this teacher? And, you know, the, the kid goes, oh, my gosh, she's super hard. Like, she does way too much. She does too much homework. She does too much tests. Her lectures don't make sense. Oh, my gosh, don't take her. She sucks. And then you'll be like, okay, I'm not going to take her. But really, why the student thinks that the teacher sucks and why she's so hard is because the teacher, or not the teacher, the student never came to class and never did his homework and never did anything and never paid attention. So that's why, you know, they thought the teacher was so hard. So you might get biased opinions because then you might meet someone that went to class and paid attention and got an A and thinks that this teacher is super easy. So now you have mixed feelings about this teacher and you don't know who to take. So if you ever come into a debate on which teacher you should have, I recommend going to RateMyProfessor.com and there you can type uh, a teacher's first name and last name and you can kind of tell which teacher it is because it says what school it is um, that she teaches at and it says uh, what her field is. Sometimes it's hard because some teachers aren't on there but most of my teachers have been on there. Even when they teach at different schools like I'll still look because they're still under the same field and I like to know what they say about the teacher I've never well let me let me let me not lie um <laughs> I've I think I've not taken two teachers based off of what rate my professor and usually you know I'm pretty like oh whatever I'll take it I'll do good in any class I get in you know whatever but some comments were really just like ugh, like I don't even want to deal with that that sounds horrible how could this teacher even be even be teaching right but, you know, uh, yeah, I just didn't take the class. It was some health education class um, that I was really interested in, but I'm going to find a different teacher to take and see if I like them. And also, um, let me see. Also, if you don't want to do Rate My Professor or Ask Around, I guess you could meet the teacher in person and or maybe email them and, and ask what their syllabus is and stuff like that. But let's be real. Like, let's be real. Who wants to do all of that? I don't want to do all that. I What I look for in a teacher, honestly, when I look for a, a class and a teacher that I'm going to choose from, I look for how many people in the class. Uh, I think in psychology at my school, I think that, that thing has like 800, 700, 700 seats in that class. Do I want to take that psychology class? If it's not going to ha help me graduate, no, I'm not taking that psychology class. So did I take it? No. Did I want to take it? Yes. But with 700 people? No, I don't. So I think the max classes that I've had was about 1 to 200 people. And honestly, that's fine. I get a seat in the front and I basically read over like... Sometimes, you know, I, I get all crazy on Google and I look at how long have they been teaching, how old are they, because I personally don't like super duper old teachers. I like kind of like middle, like still relatable like type teachers, but yeah. And I had this one teacher, he was so old, but he was so cute. He was so cute. He reminded me of the old guy from Up. Oh, he was so cute. He had like the little glasses and like the square like head and 
anyway, let's not get off topic here. Aside from choosing classes and aside from like choosing teachers and everything, I think you should pick a schedule that's going to allow you to have some work time. Because honestly, I have so much free time in college. I don't know why my parents tell me. They, they say things like, oh, Asia, I don't want you to work. School is your job right now. You need to focus on school, Asia. Don't work. And I'd be like, what? Like, what? <laughs> like, I have to work. You know why? My parents pay my tuition. My parents pay my rent. My parents pay for my books. And my parents pay for my food. But you know what they don't pay for? They don't pay for these nails. And they don't pay for these hair. Pfft, that did not sound right. <laughs> okay, they don't pay for my hair to be done. And they don't pay for my nails. And they don't pay for my makeup. They don't pay for my clothes. And all of that stuff isn't like a necessity to them. So I have to work in order to keep my hair and my nails and my makeup. So honestly, if you're fine without having any extra stuff, then that's cool. Don't work. But I mean, as soon as it's time for your friends to go to the club and to go to the movies and to go to all that stuff and you're broke, uh, don't like blame that on anybody because you could go get a job. So that's why I think having a schedule that ends at 12 in the afternoon and waking up early, um, I think that's good because it gives you the opportunity to work a four hour job or an eight hour shift if you want to and still have a little bit of money and time left over. Go to class. Duh. Go to class. Okay. So in college you can have your cell phone and you can have your laptop and your iPad and you can wear whatever you want I saw this one chick she was in like some lace like corset thing with some like stripper like legs type things and I was in like my booty shorts and like my crop top type thing or whatever and the teacher didn't say not one thing to me or her at least I don't think um anyway so when it comes to like distractions like other people's clothing or or like gadgets or whatever because I know when I'm in a when I'm in a lecture I have to sit in the front because if I sit in the back I see everyone's laptops that are in front of me and people are usually like on Netflix watching movies or something or watching something weird and you know what I start doing I'm in class and I'm just like looking over like, I just, like, what, is, what are they watching? You know, like, like ooh, this is interesting. And then I start watching the movie, and then I don't even know what happened in class because I was so into that movie. So, that's why you should probably sit in the front. Yeah, yeah, sit in the front. But if you don't want to sit in the front, sit in the back and just don't be distracted, okay? I love my cell phone. I text all through class. I don't know why teachers underestimate uh, cell phones in high school. I can text in class and still get the full gist of what's going on in the class in the lecture unless the teacher says something like on the low and they well I don't know uh but I pretty much usually hear everything uh, speaking of classes you definitely 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 want to be on time you know why you want to be on time because some teachers start right on the dot and I absolutely love um one of my teachers she was a math teacher for my statistics class and she she started like three minutes before the class actually was supposed to start and um, that was beneficial because that showed that you know she really was into schoolwork and wasn't about you know lollygagging or whatever words you want to use um, but it, it kind of put me in check because that meant I had to be there like five or ten minutes early one to get my seat because whenever I didn't get my seat right in the front somebody else would take it so I would have to come um, like 10 minutes early to get my seat but after they after students noticed that I was sitting there every day they knew not to sit in my seat you can't sit with us anyway um but like I was saying she was really nice and she started on time and she ended on time I can't stand teachers that go over the time like your time is up okay anyway so Basically what I'm saying is come to class on time and also that will show the teacher that you're really interested in class too because what happens usually when it's, you know, towards the end and it's finals time and your grade isn't where it's supposed to be, if she knew that during the beginning that you were really into class already, she's gonna, you know, try to help you with your grade. But if you don't come to class and you're late all the time and she knows it, then at the end when you're trying to say, oh, my grade should be higher because blah, 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 you know, what can I do? She's probably not going to want to help you because from the start you haven't been interested. So 
why should she help you, right? Right, they still get paid. Anyway, I think that's pretty much all I have for, you know, classes and schedules and, you know, back to school college advice. And if I missed anything, I'll probably type it in the description box below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and continue to watch my college series. Thank you for watching. Bye.